Welcome back to Project Daily Drive, and you like my wall of things. I thought I might as well do this properly, I have a wall of utterly useless things to make behind me look a little bit more interesting. I don't know why I'm trying to make people look at the wall behind me and not me, but anyway. So, a couple of days ago, I had a bit of a bad time. I was on my way to work, a little bit late, uh, when something happened. Jean started running really, really lumpily, and then just cut out. And, uh-oh. So I had to pull over, and I opened up the bonnet, thumped the fuel pump, and it started working again. Something had gone wrong with the fuel pump. I got back in the car, carried on, and got about 200 metres before she cut out again. Pulled back over, tried to thump the fuel pump, but it wasn't having any of it. I couldn't get her to run. Oh dear. Not good. Something went wrong with the fuel pump. And... I've tried to clean it with a file, clean the points with a file, which is what most people would recommend, but no dice, couldn't get it to work. Let's have a look. A bit of an investigation. What's gone wrong? Okay, so there's clearly something very wrong with my fuel pump, which means I need to remove it. Starting first with getting as much petrol out of it as possible. As you can see here, I'm disconnecting the electrics, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the engine and then run it until it completely runs out of fuel. Now, this won't get all of the fuel out of the fuel lines, but it'll get an awful lot of it out, which means that it's not going to go absolutely everywhere when I remove the pump. I'm also going to disconnect the battery, as you can see here, because we're messing with petrol and I don't want any sparks whatsoever because that would cause a fire. Now, to remove the fuel pump, I need to remove the hoses. So the rubber hose, you just didn't do this clip here and then pull the hose off like so. Nice and easy. Now, be careful not to spill fuel absolutely everywhere and make sure that you clamp the hose somewhere that's higher up so that gravity doesn't pull all the fuel out of the hose. Now, this one here is the feed from the fuel tank. It's made of copper that was replaced for me when Morris Millennium did the work. Thank you very much, guys. And you just have to undo this gland nut here and then simply remove the hose. Now you won't be able to actually pull it out of the way because it's solid metal, but you should be able to pull it off the fuel pump and then tuck it out of the way like so. Oops. Now we can remove the actual fuel pump and there's only two bolts that hold it on here in the engine bay, right in the battery tray. Just remove the first one, which actually has the earth on it as well, and then remove the second. Be very careful not to let it fall, by the way, because it will be full of fuel and it will pour fuel absolutely everywhere and make a mess. Now we've got the fuel pump disconnected, let's see if we can fix whatever problems causing it to cut out. So I've got the fuel pump here on the bench and let's have a look at it and see what the problem is. Now you'll notice there's no dust cap on the end of this because I never put it back on, I couldn't be bothered. So let's have a look at the problem area that's causing it to cut out, the points. The points here are contact breakers that open and close and operate the diaphragm. Now let's have a look at the point surface themselves and, uh, oh dear. I'm pretty sure that that's pretty obvious on camera, but they are blackened and corroded as anything. In fact, it doesn't show up well on camera, but they've actually worn away in the middle. They've been eaten away by years of electrical arcs, and they're almost cup-shaped. These are completely shot. There's no way a, a file would fix these. They're completely eaten away and worn away. So, at the very least, this fuel pump needs a new set of points. Oh dear, that's not good at all. So I already know I need to replace the points, but what about the diaphragm? There's a problem with the diaphragm that could be an issue or could be fine, and for that I need to crack open the front of the fuel pump. It's a problem with modern fuel, allow me to explain. There's a problem with modern fuel and classic cars, which is what I want to check. You see, back when my car was a normal car, you had stuff like 4-star leaded fuel and stuff like that. Nowadays, fuel like modern cars is completely different. First off, modern fuel is unleaded, it doesn't have any lead additive in. But secondly, modern fuel has an E number or an ethanol rating. You'll notice this when you go and fill up an E followed by a number, either 10 or 5, which denotes the amount of ethanol in the fuel. Now, ethanol is a biofuel, and for modern cars, it's perfectly fine, there's no noticeable difference. The problem comes with classic cars and older rubber components. You see, ethanol isn't like petrol. If you have certain types of rubbers in your fuel system, the ethanol will eat away at it. 
which means that classic cars have to swap out any of the fuel system that's older rubber with modern rubbers that are resistant to being melted by the ethanol. Now I've done this with my car with everything except for the fuel pump. This is the same fuel pump that I had when I bought the car, I haven't touched it, and so I don't know if the diaphragm in this is designed to take ethanol or not. And that concerns me because ethanol could and very well might be eating through the rubber diaphragm, which could cause a fuel leak. So I want to see what condition the diaphragm's in and see if it needs replacing or not by cracking off the cap at the top of the fuel pump. Let's have a look. Okay, so I've removed the cap here. As you can see, it just came straight off, which was nice and easy. Now this here is the reservoir at the start of the fuel pump. This is where the fuel comes in and out. You'll notice there's a fuel filter in there and also it's full of crud. That's a bit concerning. That means that my fuel tank's filthy. I mean, I knew that anyway, but it's not nice to see proof of it right there. The way it works is that fuel comes in through this hose, gets sucked into the reservoir through that fuel filter and then out through the top. Now, those two little holes there are where the diaphragm pulls fuel in and then pushes it out via a one-way valve. And that's how a fuel pump works. There's no spinning parts in a fuel pump. It's actually just a diaphragm that moves forwards and backwards. Now, this reservoir's fine. It's the diaphragm that I want to take a look at. So allow me to crack it open and let's see what condition it's in. Okay, there we go. I've cracked it open and... Oh, dear. That is not a healthy-looking diaphragm. There's a lot of crud and sludge there at the bottom, and so it doesn't show up too well on camera, but the rubber's actually started to be eaten away. You can see that ring in the middle there where the rubber's not quite as smooth as it is everywhere else. That is ethanol that has started to eat away at the rubber. Clearly this isn't the more modern type of rubber diaphragm. But now we've completely deconstructed it, you can see how a fuel pump works. It's basically a giant solenoid. The diaphragm moves like this, opening and closing the contacts, several times a second and that's what makes that signature clicking noise in the car when the fuel pump's going but the state of that diaphragm is a bit concerning and that really worries me because this diaphragm could have perforated and that could have led to a fuel leak inside the engine bay not good now i could get a rebuild kit for this fuel pump they're not expensive but the problem is i need this car back on the road sooner rather than later and also i use this car to get forward and backwards to work which means that I don't really have time to do a fuel pump rebuild myself. Unfortunately, I've got to shell out of my wallet and buy a brand new one. Luckily, SU are still around to this day, so I can buy a brand new fuel pump straight from them. Let's have a look at it. Yes, to my pleasant surprise a few years ago, I found out that SU are still going strong. They're still around to this day and still make the components for classic cars. So I got this, a brand new SU electronic fuel pump. There's some information about the fuel pump, and on the back, even more importantly, is the warranty form. Part of the reason I got this, it's covered under warranty, which means that if something goes wrong, I can send it back. And here it is, wrapped in brown paper with all the different brands SEO are under, is the brand new fuel pump for my car. Let's have a look at it. Oh, now that is a nice looking fuel pump. This isn't a refurbished or reconditioned unit. It is brand new, never before fitted to a car, and it's mine. Now, this is not quite the same as the fuel pump you just saw. Same basic design, but with one massive difference. Allow me to explain while I move all over the electronic tabs. Yes, this is an electric type fuel pump. The previous fuel pump you saw was known as the mechanical type, and that's because it uses actual moving points, which wear out over time and have to be serviced every couple of thousand miles by cleaning them off, which is what caused the old fuel pump to fail. This doesn't have that. I would open it, but it avoid the warranty. Instead, it has a modern chipset and no actual parts that touch each other to move the diaphragm. This means that this fuel pump, apart from cleaning the fuel filter on it, is maintenance free. I don't have to do any more maintenance to it. It doesn't need to be checked every thousand miles or so. I can just put it in the car and forget about it, which is fantastic. This is a well-known and trusted upgrade. The only reason you go to the mechanical one really is if you wanted to keep it completely stuck, but my Morris Minor is a daily driver and I want it to be as reliable as possible. This never needs servicing and it is entirely reliable. I'm just moving the little electronic tabs because mine doesn't have a spade connector, it has a loop connector on the end and then the earth I wanted to move to make it easier to plug in. 
Now let's put this brand new, lovely fuel pump on the car. So putting the fuel pump back on the car is exactly the same process as removing it, just in reverse, starting with the two bolts through the battery box. The fuel pump attaches to the side of the battery box and is only held in by two bolts, it doesn't sit on anything, which means you've got to put both of these bolts in at the same time. Now on my car, one of the earth connectors, as you'll see here, is actually connected to one of these bolts. I don't know if that's stock or not. The wiring limb of my car has been messed around with so much, I can't tell if it should be like that or not. But that's how it was when I took the old fuel pump off, so I'm going to put it back on. Any other Morris Minor owners, feel free to tell me if that's how it should be or not. And then simply tighten up both of these nuts until nice and tight so the fuel pump is held securely in position. Now it's a matter of connecting up the wiring and the fuel line, starting with the fuel line from the tank. Just remove this cap here I kept on to prevent dirt getting into the fuel pump, put the copper hose in place, get the gland nut that had fallen all the way down to the bottom, and tighten it up like so. Now I'm going to use an adjustable spanner because unfortunately right now I don't own a set of Imperial spanners, I really wish I did. I use a Barco spanner here which are really high quality spanners, they don't tend to round off nuts, so it's fine. Just tighten it up nice and tight, don't over tighten it, you might damage the copper line, but just nice and tight so it makes a watertight seal, or a petrol tight seal. And then clip the earth onto the pump like so. Now I just need to put the fuel line in at the top. As you can see here I'm going to remove the cover once again and put this hose in. Now this hose is brand new, I replaced it not that long ago, so it's modern rubber, it's resistant to ethanol. I'm just going to put it in place and then tighten it up. Now stock, the fuel line went straight from the pump to the carburetor, but on my car I've got it looped around behind the wiper motor with an inline fuel filter, just because there's a load of crud and nastiness in the fuel tank, so it just makes the petrol nice and clean. There you go, tighten that nice and tight. And finally, just put the power lead on the back here. Now, I've got a loop connector on here, I think it should be a spade connector, but somebody's put a loop connector on here, so I'm just going to put it on the power spindle and then tighten it up. And that's pretty much it. That's the fuel pump in place, ready to go. So now, let's test it. And feel free to listen to my genuine surprise about how a healthy fuel pump should sound. That was impressive. Now the question is, will the engine start? Let's see. Nice. There we go, the fuel pump's in and Jean's been running sweet as a nut. Brilliant. She's been getting me to and from work, not a problem since then, so hallelujah. No more fuel pump problems. Now I am going to rebuild that old fuel pump. I'm going to make a full strip and rebuild video for YouTube. Just so if anybody wants to rebuild one, they've got a guide on how to do it. Speaking of rebuilds, however, remember this, the carburetor I was throwing around in the last episode? I have completely rebuilt this. You'll notice it's a bit shinier here on top, even though I haven't completely polished it up. This is a completely rebuilt carburetor, and this is actually going to be the subject of the next video. We're going to be fitting this carburetor to the car. So look forward to that. I've never done a carburetor change. I never properly tuned up a carburetor before. Now, I am going to do a rebuild guide on the carburetor, but not this one. I didn't film it because past couple of weeks I've not been feeling very well because of insomnia and problems with my legs. So I just wanted to do something relaxed off camera. So hope you all understand. I'm going to rebuild the one that comes off, however, and I'll be doing that on YouTube. So we're sorted for today. But before we get to the end of the video, I wanted to just do something a little bit different. You see, I'm a small YouTube channel. I only do this as a hobby because I enjoy making it, but I'm not the only person doing stuff like this. So I wanted to give a couple of shout outs to people because why not? See if you like this, I'll make, make this a regular segment. So here goes, starting with Craig Pest's channel. Craig Pest is this young lad in America. He has a Morris Minor of his own that he's been restoring. He makes videos on YouTube and you know, he's brilliant. He uploads regularly. He's doing his own thing, and that's fantastic. So I've got a link to his channel in the description. This is his Morris Minor. It's earlier than mine, and it's a really nice-looking car. Now, he's getting that all sorted, so 
big respect to him. I think he also is planning on daily driving it as well, so, uh, oh boy, good luck with that. Another person to give a shout out to is this guy, Project Mildred. This is a guy who's doing another Morris Minor, but unlike myself and Craig Pest, he's doing it from the ground up, total strip down and complete rebuild. At the moment he's doing the engine rebuild, and this guy's much more equipped in his workshop than I am, so give him a shout out, because he's going to need all the luck he can get, because he's doing an awful lot there to rebuild a Morris Minor from the ground up. So, big shout out to him, once again, links in the description. And for the final shout out, I haven't got a YouTube channel for this guy, but a big shout out to Ryan Baines. Apparently he's just started getting into tinkering with Morris Miners. He reached out to me because he said that apparently watching my videos has got him interested in getting to tinkering. So I respect it. If you've been inspired by my videos to do anything, then Lord help you, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I think I might make this a regular segment of Project Daily Drive, giving people shout out smaller YouTube channels and see what projects they're working on. So uh, let me know if you want to see that as a regular part of the channel. Right, now we're moving to the end of the episode. So thank you ever so much for watching. If you want to help support this channel, like I said, I only do this as a hobby. I just enjoy making videos. There is a link in the description to the tip jar, a Kofi link. It's also on screen where you can drop a small donation just for the price of a cup of coffee. And it really helps me out. It either goes to buying new parts or helping me feed myself, which frankly, I don't really need to do all that much, but you know, it helps out anyway. So thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you all have enjoyed this video and I've been trying something new. You may have noticed I've done more voiceover stuff than talking to camera. Let me know if that's something you want to see more of or you want to see me mostly nattering and wittering away to a camera. Like I said, I'm trying out new things. I just want to see what people enjoy. So if you like this video, if you prefer the older style of videos, let me know in the comments. I do actually read all of them, so I do appreciate it when you all leave a comment or a like. It really does help me out and makes my day a little bit brighter. So thank you ever so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode when uh, we're going to be doing the carburetor. Oh, and don't worry about the next service guide episode. That should be coming out fairly soon. I just needed to redo all of the voice lines because I'm a perfectionist and I didn't like them so <sighs> why do I do this to myself see you all next time bye